While rejecting the label feminist, Chantal Ackermann's work can be closely understood through écriture féminine, a term in literature theory coined by Hélène Sissou in Le Rire de la Méduse from 1975, The Laugh of the Medusa. It refers to the inscription of female realities into text and language. Female experience and sexuality have been denied expression in favor of the masculine linguistic regime, which has fashioned language as an essentially male, fellow-centric instrument to assert patriarchal dominance. Ackerman's Écriture Féminine manifests itself in camera work, more precisely montage, or rather her reluctance to cut away. It lies within the single still frame into which Belgian widow Jeanne, played by Delphine Serigue, enters and exits. Her holding the shot prolonged, witnessing what Deleuze called durée, duration, passing time. Within hyper-realistic, sterile tableaus, Ackerman elevates the woman's repetitive household chores, working towards something that only routine and slight alterities, shifts and changes can tear apart and shine a light on, a void in domestic life, identity, something ungraspably dark, hiding in the corners of her apartment, whose geography we can gradually map in our minds. We never learn who Jeanne is. Her stoic facade and apathetic exterior are impenetrable and may indicate a trauma that is resurfacing in the end, in which she makes her first conscious decision in the film ever, acting out of disgust and frustration, appalled by what she has been doing, or what she herself has become, rebelling against an oppressive system, before that, she has no access to either her emotions or willpower. In fact, she is trapped by her own neurotic compulsions. Whenever she's not preparing food for her son, or doing the dishes, or folding clothes, or running errands, she's completely distressed, empty and anxious, with no raison d'être whatsoever, suffering a mental breakdown. She's been conditioned to do the housework and look after her son in an almost mechanical fashion, without her possessing any sense of self. Work is the only thing giving meaning to her aimless existence. As a result of minor inconveniences and errors in her everyday life, Jeanne's behavior is growing increasingly erratic. No one takes notice, however. The overcooked potatoes are a first indicator of disturbance in her daily rituals, and slowly depression sets in. Former perfectionism makes way for an irrational inner life taking shape. The formation of subjectivity and female desires. The coffee won't taste good. She wakes up way too early, even before the shops open. Her killing the client with scissors on the third day is rendered an act of pure defiance, a disruptive instant of female agency entirely absent beforehand. In the last shot, she has regained her usual calm, staring blankly into the camera for several minutes in the dark. Her possible liberation, in this case, a return to the established ritualistic formula is only hinted at, never realized. As we've watched her self-negating desires and alienation meticulously and up close inside her own four walls, to call it emancipation is almost too simplistic. She literally and figuratively renounces societal norms through her transgressive act.